room that have been implanted as seeds within us. We have them, all of them. It says of Messiah, the fullness of God dwelt in him bodily. And Messiah dwells within us. So the one who the fullness of God dwelt bodily dwells within us. That means the fullness of God dwells within us. Yeah. It's like if A equals B and B equals C, therefore A equals C. Okay? Yeah. Alright, get a little mathematical here again. Okay, yep. so Messiah lives within us. So we have divine attributes within us. They are not activated all the time. Okay? They're not, they're not manifesting all the time. But they're there. Okay? The divine quality, the divine attribute of love is not an emotion. It's not just a feeling. It's a divine thing. It's a living, breathing, spiritual reality that is within you. It exists. It has a heartbeat. It's from God and it's within you. And it's activated at certain divine times. It's not activated all the time. It's activated at certain times. So like, I don't know, you're walking down the street and there's a homeless person. And that divine attribute of love manifests. It's been there all along, but it's kind of taken a nap. And then all of a sudden, boom, it comes out. Okay? You don't have emotion for the person. It's divine thing. It's a living, breathing attribute of the Holy One of Israel who's inside of you, and it comes out. Right? We know somebody who's just messing up, messing up, screwing up everything. Right? And we see him or her, and we just have this compassion that I don't care what they're doing, I don't care how low they're going, I still see something in this person and I forgive them. That's the divine attribute of grace, of chen, of grace that's already within you. And it's being activated. It's being activated when you encounter that person, and it's a divine thing. Because God at that moment wants that attribute of himself to well up within you. Do you understand that? There is another attribute of God. It's a divine thing. It's not just a word. It's not just a noun. It's not just an emotion. It's not just a feeling. That gets activated in times of testing. And that entity, that living, breathing, spiritual entity within you is called perseverance. Okay? And it's not just a thing. It's real. Give it a name. Mr. P, hmm. whatever you want. He's in you. He's always there. But he's activated in times of testing. Just like when there's somebody that you encounter and the attribute of love begins to come forth. Testing brings forth this thing called perseverance that's always there. That's why in the book of James it says rejoice. Rejoice. Count it joy when you're being bachan, when you're being tested, because the testing produces perseverance. And perseverance, let perseverance, it says, run its course in you, is what it says in the book of Yaakov, the book of James. Let perseverance run its course, which means that when you're in this fire, when you're in this time of testing, when you're in the time of testing, perseverance wakes up, okay? Before that, he didn't need to because there was nothing to persevere in. So he's just, I don't know, he's playing solitaire within you or something like that. But then you're in the time of testing and he wakes up and he starts to manifest. And James says, let it do its thing. Let perseverance run its course within you so you can be mature and complete and lack nothing. Amen. It must, that is a divine thing, and it must do its thing. And if we run the other way and God allows us to run to a place where it's less hot, it will catch up to you because in Bachan is Chen, which is mercy. So it will catch up to you because he's going to do this thing. And this perseverance is going to grow and it's going to mature into its fullness within you. Thank you. The ultimate goal of this perseverance is like the story of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Where you're in the fire and you're not affected by it. Because perseverance 
has manifested and has matured to its fullness. And the real reality of that story of Shadrach, Rack, and Meshach, and Abednego is not that we're like them, but there was a fourth that was in the fire. That is what you're maturing into. Not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but God is raising up a people who will be that fourth, that one that looks like, that represents the Son of Man, that is in the fire, that is making it possible for these three to withstand the fire. That is the ultimate result of this perseverance that he's bringing forth. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be fully complete in all our lives because God considers this body as one. So when one of us is going through a test, it's for the body. You must understand that Yeshua views the body as one. And it's not as much about, although he works in us individually, he works with us as one body. So the time is coming when the body of Messiah will be able to go into the fire and be a, a minister and be a comfort and to be a, 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 a to, to be the protection of the world that is in the fire. That is what he is doing. And that is the ultimate result of the testing of the Bechan that we are in. So hang in there. It's going to be okay. This time, is it's a temporary time. There's a time of test. And it's a time where Adonai takes us out and lets us rest. But it's for a purpose. It's to let this thing called perseverance manifest within us. And we become more and more like him. So hang in there. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Hallelujah! It's a promise that is often misunderstood in the scriptures. And it says all things work together for good. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It's a misunderstood scripture because we suffer from spiritual myopia. There's your SAT word of the day. It's short-sightedness. We think that it always means the thing we're dealing with, the thing we're praying for, is going to result in the specific thing that we're praying for. Okay? Somebody is going through a situation, we're praying for that situation, and the body of Messiah thinks, parts of the body of Messiah think, because all things work together for good, it's going to work out in the way we're praying. Okay? There's a Messianic rabbi that many of us know, or called, his name is Jeff Bernstein. His son got lost about a month ago, praying, 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 praying for a result. He was found in a river yesterday mm. in Virginia. Dead. Not the result we've been praying to see. But God works all things for good. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't mean that this, that he's, that this is going to result in the way that we're praying. Right? But it will work out for good. There's a little story in this Torah portion. And i got to mention the Torah portion because I'm a rabbi and that's what rabbis do. It's mentioned how Rachel, when she died, was buried kind of on the way from here to there. Right? She was buried in Bethlehem, which back then was called Ephrat. And that's where she was buried. And it's just a weird burial place because it's like it's kind of like on the side of the road kind of thing. All the other uh, patriarchs and matriarchs were, were buried in this certain cave that Abraham purchased. Abraham was buried there. Sarah was buried there. Isaac, Rebecca, Leah, Leah mm -hmm. Jacob. In Jewish tradition, Adam is buried there. I don't know if that's true or not, but in Jewish tradition, that's the same place that Adam is buried, and that's why Abraham wanted it. Don't know if it's true or not, but that's in, the, that's in the Jewish oral traditions that have been passed down. Not so with Rachel. They just kind of buried her on the way in, in Bethlehem, which was nothing at the time. This is another Jewish tradition, a Jewish translation of this, and I'm going to share it with you. A thousand years later, and this is in Scripture, the children of Israel were going through a real bachan, a real test, where Babylon came in, destroyed Jerusalem, and the children of Israel were taken into captivity. Their march out of cap uh, into captivity, their march out of Israel into captivity, went right through Bethlehem. And it says in the scriptures, in Jeremiah, I believe, that it says Rachel was weeping for her children. 
for they are gone. And that's even repeated again in the New Testament with what Herod did. In the Jewish oral traditions, what it says, and I'm not saying this is true, okay, I'm just saying this is a tradition and it speaks to a, a greater truth. It says that God heard those prayers of Rachel as the children of Israel were coming through her area where she was buried. And he heard her supplications, praying for her children, and he shortened the captivity to 70 years so they were able to go back to Israel. So God heard the prayer of Rachel a thousand years later. Okay? Now, whether that's true or not, whether that's an accurate translation is not the point. The point is that here is the death of one of the matriarchs of Israel, buried along the side of the road, and the reality that a thousand years later, God can turn that for good and make something amazing happen and, and, and lessen the severity of, of, of something he was bringing on to the children of Israel because of the prayer of somebody who died a thousand years ago, that reality is true when he says, he, he, when he says that all things will work for good. It doesn't necessarily mean things are going to work out the way we want in this particular moment. But it will work out for good in your life or your children's life or a generation that way or a generation that way. Because he, his promise is yes and amen, and it will be worked out for good. That's right. So hang in there. It's going to be okay. Yep. Yes. I'll share a little bit about some of the trials from a personal standpoint. Susie, I mentioned here before, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis once. Right? And she, it was a horrible, horrible time for both of us. Horrible time. So she went to this particular ministry that she was found out about by a couple of folks, and without getting into the details, she was healed of the multiple sclerosis. She was also healed of allergies that she didn't even, wasn't even on her mind when she went down there. Okay? It was this amazing, amazing healing. Baruch Hashem. Susie and I used to go to a Messianic synagogue in New Jersey. That's where I actually accepted the Lord. And that's where Susie and I started to go when we first started to date. Um, there is a young girl that goes to that congregation. She still goes there today. Her name is Ruti. Ruti Frankel. Ruti had something called hypersensitivity, something like that. I don't remember what it's called, but you're essentially allergic to everything. Okay? The sun. You can't have the sun, you can't feel any flowers, or everything you're allergic to. So she was about 16 years old when she had to be relegated into her basement, which was filled with foil. And there she stayed for five years, not able to go out because she was allergic to everything, little routine. And Susie and I, because we had this experience, right, we went to the mom and dad, and we went, or in me lane, I, I don't know if this is anything, but I want to just mention this, this ministry we went to and the healing that we had, or Susie had, where she was healed of multiple sclerosis. So I'm just, I, I'm sharing it with you to see if you want to go. It wasn't really received. A couple of years later, Ruti is still in the basement. Still in the basement. We went to the parents again. You know, Maybe this is something you want to look, look through, okay? Remember, all things work together for good. And it's already worked out for good for Susie's standpoint. She was already healed. It already worked out for good. We were here in Rhode Island now. I was visiting my mother in New Jersey. Went to visit the congregation that I used to go to just for a visit. Out comes to me, little Ruti. And I went, whoa, Ruti, is that you? And I went to the parents. She, she's out of the basement? And the parents went, yeah. You know what happened? We wound up calling that place that you guys went to. They spoke to her on the phone. We didn't even go down there. They spoke to her on the phone a few times, prayed over her, read a few scriptures over her, and she was healed immediately. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and the I was talking to the father one-on-one, -on -one, and the father said, yeah. When she came out of the basement, the first thing she wanted to do was walk around the house, go outside, which she wasn't able to do, and walk around the house. So I took her for a walk around the house, and that walk took two hours. 
Wow. The reason it took two hours is because Ruti stopped at every flower, at every tree, at every weed, at every stick on the ground, at everything that she was not able to touch for five years being in the basement. Wow. And she's healed to this day. Yes. Hallelujah! So I was so excited. Yeah. So I call up Susie, who was somewhere else. I said, Susie, you're not going to believe this. Ruti is healed. They called up this place that we went to, and they prayed over her, and she was healed, and she's out of the basement. She was at Beth Zion today. Susie starts over the phone, crying, crying, crying. And she starts going, and I'll never forget hearing it through my phone, because she wasn't talking to me. Thank you, God, that I was sick. 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 Because of what happened to her, that good seed that happened through her continued to propagate. And if that didn't happen, Ruti, who knows, maybe would have still been in the basement. But God used that for good, yeah. Susie's sickness for good, beyond our myopic prayers, just for Sue's healing. Yes. Get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All things work for good independent of what you're praying for and what it is the situation that you're going through. So hang in there. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I have one more to share. And again, just from an experience that Susie and I had with things working out for good. And I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it worked out for good. Ah. This is back before Susie and I met. Susie's best friend was her mom. Susie has shared this many times if you've ever seen Susie and I in music ministry. We probably shared it even at Beit Tachia. Susie's mom uh, passed away of cancer. This is back almost 20 years ago before I met Susie. They were praying for Susie's mom, obviously, for healing. But it didn't work out that way. It was her time to go. This one was unto death, and God took Susie's mom. It was devastating for Susie, because her mom was her best friend. And um, she remembered the scripture back then, that all things work for good. To those who love you, God, and are called according to your purpose. So this didn't work out for good. How is it going to work out for good? It turned out that she was at a job, and the job stunk, and she went to another job, and the job stunk. All of a sudden, like a year later, or whenever it was, her mom, who has now passed away, received a letter to go to a job fair for a specific company. I guess the company found out that her mother was a nurse, and, and Susie was a, as a nurse also. So she got this letter saying, hey, why don't you come to this job fair at Prudential Insurance and see if it's right, right for you. This, her mother got this after she's gone. Susie received the letter. And she called up Prudential and she said, my mother's gone, she passed away a year ago. Would you mind if I come to the job fair? I'm a nurse too. So they said, yeah, you can come to the job fair. She goes to the job fair and she got the job. Okay? That was the job where she met me. Okay? Now, it's not that when we started to date that all of a sudden it clicked. And it's not after we got married that it clicked. But I remember the moment where all of a sudden we were in our house, this is years after we were married. She goes, oh my gosh. I go, what? She goes, if my mom didn't pass away, we would never have met. We wouldn't have gotten married. I said, yeah, you're right. So she goes, he worked it out for good. I was like, wow. And I don't like that one because I don't like to be the good that came out of it. You know. But it's reality. Fact is that I wouldn't be standing before you today if, if her mom didn't pass away. That's fact. So all things work together for good. Yes. So remember that as you're going through these, these trials. Perseverance will run its course through you. Let it happen. Let it happen. You want a good exercise in this? 
oh, this comes from the Lord, because this wouldn't come from any human rabbi. Go to some church. Don't come to Mishkan. Go to some church that you don't like. <laughs> go to someone that's religious. Where you're like, oh, I don't want to go there. Go visit them instead of Mishkan on a Sunday. And sit there. And when you start to get agitated, count it as joy. Because perseverance is starting to work through you. Okay. And stick it out. And let this thing, this attribute of God, let it permeate into your veins and mature so you can be complete, as Scripture says. That comes from the rabbi. All right? So hang in there. Hang in there. It's going to be okay. Adonai is good. Adonai is faithful. Hallelujah! There's gold at the end of this rainbow. And you are the gold. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And that's it. From ages past. That's been tried and tested over time. That he who begun a good work in you will complete it. Until the day of the Messiah Yeshua. Which is when he is manifested in you fully. That's the day of the Messiah Yeshua. Thank you, Father. And I would love you. We submit to you, Adonai. Your ways are far above our ways, Adonai. Mm. And we love you, and we submit to being transformed into your likeness, Father. Yes, so we ask Adonai for your help to hold our hand, Adonai, through this fire, Father. And be with us, and we know you are. You are our front guard, you are our rear guard, Father. You will never leave us or forsake. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Adonai. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Adonai. Lift us up. In yes. Messiah Yeshua's name. Yes. Thank you, Father. Do we have a...